Thank you very much. My name is Omar Jaju and welcome to the Chronicle. It has just ended here between the Gambia and uh, DR Congo in the 2021 Afghan qualifiers for Cameroon. And uh, it had ended 2-2 uh, for both teams here at the Independent Stadium in Bacau. And uh, discussing, joining me to discuss about the draw is uh, Kiva Gespoture, head coach of Bacau United in the third division of the Gambian League, and Ahmad Cham, a trainer at QCT Football Academy, and of course Boba Karjalo, uh, retired referee and now uh, a member of the referees committee in this country. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me as we discuss uh, about the game that has just ended here at the Independence Stadium. Afghan qualifier. Kebal, let me start with you. Uh, Gambia picked up a point against the Congo at home. What does it mean to the qualification process uh, for Cameroon 2021? Um, Omar, it was a very good point. Um, remember, we were expecting the, the, under the reverse happen. We were saying the first two games we were walking out for four points. Um, unfortunately, that was we were expecting a draw in Angola and a win at home. Um, luckily enough, or fortunately enough, the reverse happened. We were able to collect the three points in Angola, which gave a op big optimism to the public and the community. You can see how the, the fans turn out to come to watch the game. We are expecting to go with the six points. But remember, Congo is not an easy, easy side, a very technical and organized team. Um, if we were able to get coming back from two, um, twice coming from behind to, to get a draw, I think that's a very good point mm. for the Gambia. Mm. Uh, Ahmad, let's talk about the long-term process. It's good that we picked a point here against the Congo, a very disciplined side, experienced side. They won the uh, Nations Cup twice. Uh, Gambia is yearning to uh, qualify for the first time. Picking a point here at home, what does it mean to our qualification process? It means a lot. Uh, he said yesterday somewhere that the Gambia just don't, don't have to win the game. Mm. What we don't have to do is lose the game. Unfortunately for us, we did not lose. We played a draw to all, and that still put us on top of the table. Now, in the long run, we are no more going to play till 2020, around August. Yeah. So we'll be on top of the table up to 2020, August. Then we play another game, another two games. Then we know our fate. Against so it's, we play against Gabon and play probably Angola. Yeah. At, at home. So you will see it's important that we did not lose and because we did not lose there is a lot of expectations from the from the from the public which is which is good and for the first time I saw Gambian fans come to the stadium and are not spectators. They supported the team throughout the game. Even when it was difficult they supported the team. The other thing that happened which was very important was the coach and the coaching staff took a lot of risk. And when we were down, we ended the, tea, the game with only three, three natural defenders and a defensive midfield player. So we took a lot of risk. We had, at the end of the game, we had Bobo Job, we had Ibrahim Akoli, we had Steve, we had Moru Barrow, we had all Musa Barrow, we had a lot of offensive players. And because we were very offensive, it was very difficult for the Congolese to keep us at bay and we are in a position to have the equalizer, mm. which is very good. So that will tell us that coaching is all about taking risk, especially when you are losing and they took a very good, mm. they took risk at, at, at the prime time when it was really needed. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Boba Karjalo, I will engage you more with the young talents that we have now, Ibrahim Akoli, a prospect and has a long way to go in the national team. Uh, but first of all, what do you think clicked well for uh, the Gambian side today? Yeah, what I've seen is like that midfielder, that small boy, I don't know what's his name. Um, Hamza? Hamza, yeah. You see, um, he did very well. If you look at even the, when we made these changes, when we were uh, taking the risk to reduce the defence and add up to the, the front or the midfield. So, you see, he was even more exposed. He, his his, his uh, talent was even more exposed by then. You know, so definitely uh, this team, I don't think we have to expect so many, many things quickly. We have to be patient with, but I know if the coaches, like these are technicians, they have seen. If they have said it, <laughs> they are impressed. I, I see no reason why I should say it was not good. But I know. Let's talk about the, the, the grassroots level. I mean, you have young talents that are coming up. Yeah. Uh, Alassane Amane was on the bench. 
young star. Mm. Ibrahim Koli also young star playing in Atalanta. Yeah. Uh, let's look at their prospect in the national team. Yeah, I think uh, the football association, I don't know whether you are aware, they are trying to work on this talent development. Because if you look at now, uh, the under-17, I have one of boy who is from BGS Academy who is in that team also. They are young, young players, 14, 15. Mm -hmm. You see? So they have realized that now we have to spend, develop so many years to come forward. Because if you look at all these boys that we are using here, they all when when they were very very young, and most of them were groomed when when they left here they were groomed to develop. You know, my worry in the game was the strength of the players comparing them to the Congolese. You understand? But I think we have to concentrate on this youth development. We have to concentrate because that's where we are going to get the results. If you look at the look at the goals, look at the goals all. One way or the other, these small boys we are the ones who are involved in them. So definitely we have to concentrate on this grassroots here. Yeah. Buba Jalo. Uh, Keba, let's look at the goals that we considered. You know, some might say we are lack of communication in the defense. Again, some might argue it was like not communication coming from the goalkeeper. Uh, will you say it was a cheap goal? There were cheap goals considered by Gambia that could have been prevented? There is no goal chip in, the, in football anyway, Omar. Um, I will only concur with what you earlier said, the communication. Um, football is all about communication. You can see we could have even get a first goal with, from Barrow. Um, all those were lack of communication. In, defend, in football in general, when people don't communicate, it's always risky. And this is why we have been punished twice. You can see the first goal, how we considered it. We get more defenders in the box when we still consider the goal. Um, coming to the second goal, you've seen what Sona did. It could have been communicated before that tackle, that failed tackle. Mm. Even after the failed tackle, we still had five men behind the ball. Mm. So communication is something very much essential and important. But again, it comes to square one, as you earlier said. Um, it's not the f if, 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 if this is not the first time, but for quite a time, we bring in such a talent together. Mm. So I think... Um, um, I will still recommend something um, for the uh, for the national team to continue with the, uh, with the campaign they did the last time in Morocco. Uh, December is coming, as Ahmad Alia said, we don't play a game again till in August. So I think we should capitalize on the Christmas break to put the players together so that to break certain jinx and put the team together so that that communicational flow can be a history mm. if you want to compete in there. Mm. I'll pick it up from there. The chemistry has to be maintained in the team. Ahmad, uh, just to go into the uh, qualifiers next year, but where should we go from here in terms of maintaining plays, in terms of uh, making sure that the team is well gelled together, the chemistry is formed continually? Yeah, it's, it's very simple. What we need to do is to respect the FIFA dates. We should try to play games on every FIFA day as long as we are not going to play in the World Cup qualifiers. Right. So when the World Cup qualifiers come, there are FIFA dates, we should arrange games or organize a camp somewhere or bring the players together. Let them just train together, even if they don't play a game. Bring the players together. That will bring team bonding. The team almost have some bonding, but when you bring more the players together, that bond will be there because yes, okay. Steve is coming back, Murubaro is coming back, Hamza is coming back, Suleiman Mar was in and out. So if you have all of them in one camp for about two weeks, the players you wake up together, train together, sleep together, that bond is there. You always know what he wants, where he wants it, what time do I do it, and it's very easy. Jalo, uh, just briefly, uh, do you think there is still room for youngsters to come? And be part of the system? Yeah, I think the, the base, the foundation for this team is the youths. Because if you look at even the aging players who are in the team, their dates are coming out. You see? So there will be maybe one year or two, they have to, they have to step back. Mm. You understand? Because now the game needs a lot of energy. If you look at some of the goals in the second half, the way we were struggling with fitness, mm -hmm. it tells you some of those senior players, the way they were struggling. So those are the facts that we have to bring in. Still now, we have to bring in players. Mm -hmm. We have some Gambians who are in other clubs in Europe. We still have to follow. The negotiation they made to bring back these three or four players, and we have seen that it has made an improvement in the team. So we still have to continue searching for players. Even the best teams are still looking for more players. So we still have to continue. 
and look for young players who Gambians who are playing in other countries or who have some connection with the Gambia and we try to put them in the team. Yeah. Uh, Keba, we are just uh, going towards the, the end time. Uh, different Scorpion we've seen, we've seen today against the Congo. Att attacking was good. I mean, uh, what do you think was the issue? And now we've seen it positively going on in, in the team. Omar, um, I think it was an open secret. Um, when we first started with Tom, most of these players were in called into the squad. Um, people were, uh, there were talks all over the media, everywhere. Um, nobody was, between these two parties, as the players from the administrators, nobody was willing to pull out the trousers to, to, to take the responsibility. But um, finally, I would say credit to the coaches' decision, which has played a vital role to try to bring these two parties together, which um, it was very essential and we've seen the dividend. Um, who could tell you that the Gambia doesn't need Steve or the Gambia doesn't need Hamza and the others? Because um, definitely these are the materials we have. Um, we, we only so cast what you have and these are the things we have in hand. Um, though we might not get our players in the, in the Premiership or in the La Liga or so, but um, come on, these are the cream of our players and they've shown that. Um, last Monday before we played in, in Angola, I might mention it in the radio that um, um, it was a day they get to prepare against Angola because most of the players jet in, in uh, on Monday night, Tuesday, Wednesday they played. But this is what was he stated. Uh, it was going to be a player mentality game, a player approach mm -hmm. game. And this is what they so called, that players need to show themselves that yes, we were the guys missing. And this is exactly they did. They came home, we were expecting that what they did in Angola, we want to see the same thing. They came home, I think they did better than what they did in Angola. It was unfortunate that we take, we considered very unfortunate goals, but we could have, this was a game we could have buried. Mm. And kudos to the technical team for taking the responsibility and the risks, and they've shown the Gambians that, come on, behind us, we can do everything as possible. Yeah. Uh, Ahmad, you are the Secretary General of the Gambia Football Coaches Association. Uh, Keba just mentioned that you played a key role that uh, uh, these players that were uh, not part of the team for a while finally came and played for the country. Notably, Bobakal Trawale, Steve, Hamza Bari and Maud Baro. Uh, specifically, tell us, how did you do it? How did you make sure these players are back in the national team? No, we don't have to take credit for that because I think we are Gambians, the players are Gambians and the players are friends. When they come, we talk to them about games and for me, Especially Steve is very close to me when he comes on holidays, he always trains with me. Especially when we train at the academy, he's always around us. We always talk openly. I will ask him questions and tell him what I think he should move on with his football career. And he listens to me and he equally talks to me the way he thinks he should talk to me. And for me, we had that relationship that he's very open to me. He does not hide anything from me. He tells me his feelings. And I also tell him what I think he should do to make sure that know that Gambia is bigger than him. And what did he tell you? No, was the reason or no, were the reasons no. why he wasn't coming? Those are issues that I must not go into. If he, I think he spoke and a lot of people heard what he said. I didn't hear what he said. No, I can't go into those details. What did you tell him well, to, that, make him, to make him to make him come back? Personal discussion between me, Steve, and we talked about football and talked about him and the national team and how it will help his career as a professional player. We gave, I, gave him, I gave this example of Ivo Adams when he played for Gambia. He was playing non-league football and he played non-league football and played for Gambia, represented Gambia consecutively and was in, when he was signing a contract with Forrest Green, he was playing in Morocco with the national team. So you see, playing for the national team helped him get a better club. So Steve also playing with the national team, Mobaro playing with the national team, Hamza playing with the national team, will just uplift their respect in their clubs. Because if it is national call, all your teammates go, and you stay at home, stay with the club and train, they will look at you in a different eye. But if you fly out right now, they go back to their clubs, everybody will be happy that they have played for the national team, won four points, and are going forward. And that will help their marketability to move on to top legs. Now if any 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 team, if any team want to sign, for example, any of these players to the premiership, there is this quota in the Premier League regulation that you have to play seventy-five percent 
of your country's international. So if you don't have that, you will not be in a position to sign with a premiership club. So this is all going to help the players in the quest to go into the higher leagues. Jalo, right. finally, mm. from you, uh, what change do you want to see from the team that played today against the Congo as we go into the uh, the next phase of the qualifiers? We are facing Gabon in next year, 2020, probably August. Uh, do you want to see the same team playing against uh, Gabon or you want to see changes. If you want to see changes, tell me what changes do you want to see briefly? Yeah, personally I don't want to see uh, more changes in the team but what I want to say is like, you know, when you see something that affects you, I think uh, there is one problem that uh, most of the teams here on the red is the psychological aspect of playing football. Mm. If you look at the first goal it is psychological. Concentration, the Laps, you see, and if you look at the other one, also the, the, that that they say the, the two all the two goals. If you look at them, the origin, you look at uh, how did they come? Where are they concentrating? What were they expecting from him? You know, allowing him to take that shot. So I think uh, now most of the teams, big teams, have psychologists in their teams, so that they will be able to at least know. If you see a player, you'll be able to know how he feels and try to put him in a situation where he'll be able to concentrate. I think the concentration, they have to improve it. Yeah, it's not only about playing, playing now. The psychological aspect also, we have to look at it so that players will... Because if the goal we considered, we could have avoided conceding that goal from that corner. You understand? But because if even the goal <laughs> went in, all of them were asking each other because they don't, they, who are they going to blame? Because it was their own. They were not concentrating. And the second goal also. You could have avoided all the two goals. These are coaches. If they can tell you, those go goals can be avoided. Yeah, but what I've seen, like I said, we can add young players. But I think now we are enough with fifth division, sixth division, with the players we have now. Yeah, we have to get young players who are playing in good competitions and put them in the team. Mm. The changes we need to make in this team, I don't think it's more than two, because we have only two aging players in the team. Okay. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Jalo. Keba, just briefly, uh, it's a long process. We are not playing till next year. Uh, do you see any need for us to bring in local base players as, as, as B plan? And of course, make them gel together with the national team. Do you think there's a need for, for, for that? Um, I, Omar, I think this is where the question is. Somebody we are asking what is the PR of the coach. Um, since the league is starting before we played, um, thing now that depend on what what are the responsibility of the coach to come down to watch the league and see one or two players can work. We've seen Jin Fai. Yeah. He was a local player. Mm -hmm. He make a very impact, a big impact here against Djibouti. Mm -hmm. So uh, that tells you our league has be, had very good talent. And one thing I always emphasize is 90% of these players are from our own league. The Steves, the Hamzas, the Lamin Jalos, um, Ibis and the others. They are all from the National League. Omar Kolis, Job and the others. So that's so that the, the league is full of talent. It's just a guardian and a confidential approach. We've seen the under 20 just from Qatar. Um, they had a very good game there with a victory. So we still need to, he still need to, whatever the conditions are or whatever the agreement uh, are in the clauses, I think as the league is starting, the coach need to be on base and so that he can get very good ones for an emergency purpose to be added up to the squad. Yeah. Keba Jesper Tura, he's the head coach of Bakau United, a third division team. Uh, it used to be one of the best teams in this country, but I don't know what happened. Uh, I wish you all the best. May you come back strong. Uh, possibly two or three seasons to come. Sure. Yeah. And uh, finally, Ahmad, trainer at QCT, I'm wrapping up with you here. Let's say today the game, today uh, Cruz goes to the technical bench. It's going to be a tricky question. Cruz uh, credit goes to the technical bench or the players have given it all out on the pitch? Yeah, the players have given it all out, but the bench have also the bench also did their job by making sure that we attack when we needed to attack. When we were losing, they made sure we attack and pin the opposition down into their half and make sure we score the equaliser. Mm -hmm. So both sets did their job. The technician did their job and the players did their job. 
And but most of the time when it does not go, you see today Tom is a hero. Yeah. When we played Djibouti, it was a different story. <laughs> so that's the game. When it's not good, it's the coach. When it is good, it's the players. Did you experience the same thing before? Yes. Where you were bullied? Yeah, not necessarily bullied because I'm not the type of person who is he's been bullied by people. Oh, why? Where, where did you experience that before? Yeah, yeah, it's normal as a coach. You don't all things are not always smooth. <laughs> My name is Omar Jaju and uh, Babukar Jalo is uh, a grassroots football expert and also a retired international football referee. And here is uh, Keba uh, Ture Jasper head coach of Bakau United football team in the uh, third division. Thank you so much. It has been uh, a review of the game today between the Gambia and the Congo with the road going to Cameroon 2021. And this is the Chronicle. Thank you very much for watching.